our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them and what you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. A very good morning to you from, from your comfort and from wherever you're watching us from. Welcome to your number one news station where we play to you with the latest happening in our country and around the world. What's your take on the imposition of carbon tax by the President William Ruto? Remember to follow us at all our social media platforms, Facebook Kings TV and YouTube Kings Fraternity. Let's have a look at the news shaping the headlines. Freedom Fighter Field Marshal Mugami Kirima takes final bow. The Climate Ambition Summit. Mahawa Watu Mamboyao Netatu. Sundio. Either Wahame Kenya. Ama Waende Jela. Ama Waende Mbinguni. Akona Dawa Ingine. Mambo ni Matatu Trend. Welcome to the broadcast. I am Leon Sangoy. One of the Kenyan's prominent female figures in the liberation struggle field marshal, Muthoni Wakirima, has passed away. Muthoni Kirima was the only female freedom fighter to earn the title of field marshal during the war against British colonialists in Kenya. Muthoni was born in 1930 in Wehuene in Nairutia village near county. She, named, she was named after her grandfather, foreshadowing her future as a woman breaking barriers in a male dominated world. Muthoni during her childhood and learned Muthoni during her childhood embraced Christianity and learned about the new faith at missionary stand alongside other children. Muthoni fought alongside notable freedom fighters like Field Marshal Dedan Kemadi and General Murungi Mathenge. She is one of the two esteemed daughters of Nyeri, the other being the late Nobiel Ruritin Wangari Mathai, named as Nina Wadonjo, was among those who were in the forest for the longest period, having joined the rebellion struggle in 1952 and surrendered in 1963 together with her husband. Climate had been seen as the regular weather in specific areas. Climate change is not only perceptible in specific areas, but the consequences of climate change are scientifically noticeable on a global scale. Harriet Nanchama has won this. At the ongoing climate change summit, which is currently held in Nairobi, Kenya at the KICC for a duration of three days, scientists have established that fossil fuel, coal, oil and gas largely contribute to the global climate change by 75%. It is established that greenhouse gas emissions cover the earth as a result trapping the sun's heat, thus leading to global warming. The last conference of party, COP27, held in Sham El Sheikh, in Egypt on 20th November 22 made the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres to urge global leaders that the red line we must cross in the line that takes our planet over the 1.5 degree temperature limit in the fight for climate justice and climate ambition, end quote. During the summit, President Ruto laid a policy agenda for Kenya by including a target for Kenyans to have access to 100% clean cooking fuels by 2028 and the ambition to achieve 100% renewable grid by 2030 and 100 GW grid by 2040. Statistically, Kenyans grid currently stands for 3GW of capacity and is around 90% renewable including 45% hydropower and 20% geothermal. On 2nd September, President Ruto proposed the introduction of carbon tax which will raise government revenue for African countries. He added that speed, scale and affordability are factors to ensure development and to unlock resources. Driving towards a better Africa and a better world. The Africa Climate Week which was held at KICC was a success 
as many African presidents were present and they were able to think as one head in order to curb the climate changes and hazards. Kings TV, Hare Nyanchama, Kiambu County. In the absence of jobs and the increased spread of coronavirus in the country, many youths as well as middle-aged individuals have undertaken to set up informal enterprises such as hawking to earn a living. I managed to get on the ground and here is what I prepared for you. Walking in the busy streets of Kiambu town will show you just how big hawking is. Over 60% of Kenyans make their living through informal sectors, largely hawking. Hawking is the act of selling goods on the street and attracting the attention of people by calling out. It entails the sale of various products including clothes, fast food, fruits, drinks, snack stationery, shoes, and many other. It is the one field that has somehow managed to employ some of the unemployed in Kenya, at least those who are up for the challenge since it calls for aggressiveness to get customers. I am kama Geoffrey Barasa na kasi ambayo nafanya na chama maindi. Na hii maindi ambayo changamoto ambayo tunapitia unasanunua maindi kama ya elfu mbili Nukuje yaone maindi ingine, maindi, maindi ingine ya haitoi, maindi ingine hai, hakuna kitu ndani ama maindi ingine unasachoma ikauke Sasa tunapitia katika changamoto mbaya sio Na kitu ingine ambayo tunataka tusami ya kwamba Hii maindi unapo nunua Kuna pesa, uh, kuna pesa unasafanya ipotelee ndani Kwa sababu unachoma maindi, ingine sinaungua ama ingine sina ama singine sinakauka sasa nasema ya kwamba ni hali ambayo tunapitia katika hali ngumu kwanza tunasumbua na kanjo kanjo inatusumbua sana kwa sababu ukiweka mahali mahali penye unaona customer wako anataka utoka hapo sasa tunapitia katika changamoto katika hali na tunaona ya kwamba kwa sababu hakuna kazi tunaona ya kwamba tukaweza kujiachiri kwa hii kazi kwa sababu tunaona tunaumia sana mchengo wenyewe haipatikani wanasema iko lakini hatuone hakuna Hata nasema ya kwamba nabidi katika hali ngumu. Hata nasema ya kwamba askari inazaonekana ya kwamba uh, achira ndio hakuna. Sasa naona ya kwamba tuchome mahindi na tumeamua tufanye kazi. Beba na chwani size yako kabisa madam kupima ni bure tu. As some of the exact words you will hear most of the time as you walk in Kiambu town. These individuals use a lot of energy to ensure they get your attention. Hawking has provided many job opportunities to many Kenyans, especially the youth who are trying to cope up with the high cost of living. Beyonce Wangoi, King's TV. We take a short commercial break. We'll be right back. President William Ruto took a strong stance against sugar cartels, hindering the revival of Mumia's sugar company. The president's words, Mambo ni Matatu, became a sensation on social media. In his speech, the president said the cartels have three options, leave the country, go to jail, or take a journey to heaven. Mirikehio will take us through this trend. President William Ruto threatened the sugar cartels impending his efforts to revive Mumia's sugar company that has become a sensation on social media. During his tour in Western Legion on Sunday, August 27th, the head of state did not miss his word as he fired strong warning that left tons of many people hanging. In his speech, the president said that the cartels have three options, leave the country, go to jail, or take a journey to heaven. Mutu ye yote ambaye anapanga atikuiba pesa ya serikali my friend tafuta inchi ingine mimi nimewaambia hao wakora wote wezi wote matapeli nimesema hawa watu mambo yao ni tatu si ndio either wahame Kenya ama waende jela ama waende mbinguni hakuna dawa ingine the president's words become a succession on social media, particularly on Mambo ni Matatu. Kenya reacted to the president's statement with wit and humor, sharing fan tweets under the trading hashtag. Mambo ni Matatu. Uhame Kenya? Uende jela? 
Thabiti mara moja ama usafiri uende mbinguni Baba ni fungulie mulango Hakuna maneno mengine Lakini maneno hapa ya kuzungukana hapa ati utalete hiyo gezirani hakuna When the deceased may not worry much about the cost of being laid to rest, their loved ones certainly do, and the process can be expensive. Casket Business Startup is taking on big funeral industry with a focus on direct consumer innovation. Mary Madenge has prepared this for us. Unemployment in Kiambu County has led people to venture into uncommon occupation to earn a living, death being an inevitable and a journey every human being has to go through. Casket making has become a booming business in Kiambu County. Each casket has its own price depending on the size, finishing, color, and design. The casket starts from us 8,000 and we have some which can cost 100,000. A pentagon-shaped casket which is normal size can cost between 30,000 and up to 50,000 without handles and a price can shoot up to 70,000 inclusive of handles. A double staircase casket which is normal cost between 25,000 to 30,000 while the high roof coffin goes up to 70,000. Basically today I made my visit at Kiambu town. This is the next to Kiambu level 5 hospital and also next to the mortuary. This is where I met a lady who deals with caskets businesses. I want to interview Hamo and get to uh, detailed information of the challenges they encounter and also how they deal up with the situations. Okay, I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 I'm going to go to the Bora tu watoto wangu washibe na wasome. Hii kazi ya masanduku uwezi tajilika nayo. Ile kitu ya maana hapa ni kuniridhi kitu yenye inaweza kusaidia. Kwa hii masanduku iko na matatizo nyingi sana kuhusu mambo ya bei. Haya, kutoka sasa tunaanzia sanduku ya kutoka 8k kwenda 20. Hiyo ndio wanga wananunua hapa sana za zingine unapata mashida nyingi sana kuuza hizi masanduku unapatana na customer wenye wame, watu wao wameaga wanakulilia sana paka unashindwa utawaambia nini kwa hivyo inakuwa ni challenge wengine wanauzia wengine wanakunyaganya hivyo ndio inakuanga na mnakuanga na types ama zote ziko tu zina fall under category moja hapana tunakuanga na design mm -hmm. tunakuanga na normal normal size ni sanduku yenye mtu hawezi hata ukiwa na shinda unaweza nunua mm -hmm. kuna nyingine lakini sana so normal ina reach for how much 8k 8000 8000 mm -hmm. to 15k okay. sasa kutoka hapa huko Kiambu mm -hmm. sio sana sana uone watu wakinunua masanduku ya beikari Unaona ya mwisho ni 20 kurudi chini. Sasa hizo zingine uwezi pata watu wananunua sana. Labda sasa ukae mwaka moja kama hujauza sanduku ya beikari. Mm hivyo -hmm. ndio tunaishindia hapa. The highest the highest kwa sasa stock yenye umeka hapa. The mm. highest yenye iko na highest amount na reach. Ina reach kutoka sema 80 8000 Mm. Yet kazi kuuza matunda na after kuuza hizo matunda nikakaa sana unaona nakaa na hiyo matunda inaharibikia tu hapo nikaona the better niuze kitu hayaribiki kwa hivyo hapo nilipata idea ya kuanza na masanduku na ndio sasa hata size nauza Hmm. Na eh, kuna kwanga na taxis kama venye watu wakanjo kuja ku, maybe kufunga biashara. Ina tushinda hata kulipa hiyo taxis. Uh -huh. Juu sasa akiwa sanduku hata ukiangalia profit yake unapata ukipata nyingi ni 2k ni 2k na pengine uko na mtu anakufanyia kazi sio wewe mwenyewe. Unakaa sana bila kununuliwa. Juu sana sana hapa mochari sio watu wengi wanawekangwa huku. Hmm. Wengi wao ni ma private. 
Kwa hivyo atata kulipa inakuanga ni shida kwetu. Hmm. That was an amazing story and an amazing interview with Jacqueline who has made it to explain on the challenges that they encounter to their day-to-day -day businesses that was on case cut sellings and also you can see they uh, rage up to the kids the highest amount goes to 100,000 the cheapest goes to 80, 8, 80, uh, 8k 8, that is 8,000 Kenya shillings the most interesting thing about Jacqueline is that she has created job opportunities to many youths making her being a good role model Madenga Mary, Kings TV Devolution is a transfer of powers and funding from national to local government. It is important because it ensures that decisions are made closer to the local people, communities and business, and they affect where it has seemed not to work in Kiambu County. Simon Waweru has details on this. It has been 11 years of devolution, but in Kiambu County, it seems like devolution came a century ago. This comes after the MCS have been having differences with the governors since 2013 when devolution was launched and it kick-started its duties. Things did not become swift even after Kabogo left office and Waitito took in. It became more worse to a level of impeachment. Waitito served from 2017 to 2020. He was impeached and Nyoro took the mantle of readership in Kiambu. After an year since the 2022 election. Another difference between the governor Kemani Wamatangi and over the two MCS from Kiambu are against Wamatangi's side of readership, saying that he is a dictator. They are threatening to impeach him if he does not unite with them. Reporting for Kings TV, I'm Simon Waweru. New study shows sexual, sexuality education programs in Kenyan school are failing students, falling short of international standards. Sexual education in public schools aim to provide accessible, accurate, inclusive, and positive information to children and adolescents. Samuel Chege did some research and came up with this information. Here I am in Kiambu County, ready to, ready to take some views for sexual education, and this is what I prepared. My name is Rachel Amboinganga. Sex education is the teaching and learning about sexual anatomy and relationships. Children should start receiving sex education when they reach at the age of puberty and maturity level. Sexual education helps teenagers to behave in a moral, in a proper moral value and also prevent from having sex that causes ST, STIs and STDs and helping teenagers to be to behave in a good moral. Mm -hmm. Parents can help their children when by acting as caregivers and having an open conversation with their children, giving answers and questions to, about sex. One, all teenagers should dress in a proper, proper way and avoiding wearing seductive clothes and maintaining their moral characters. What is sex education? Sex education is the teaching and learning of sexual anatomy. There is two types of sex education. There is abstinence only and there is abstinence plus. Reporting for King's TV, I am Samuel. Check it. We take a short commercial break. We'll be right back with health news. Welcome back. A miscarriage, or, a miscarriage or spontaneous abortion is an event that results in the loss of a fetus before 20 weeks of pregnancy. It typically happens during the first trimester or first three months of the pregnancy. Our health journalist Cynthia Nyamura has information on this. There is no food too small that can't leave an imprint on this world. Today we'll dig into miscarriage. A miscarriage is the loss of a baby before the 20th week of pregnancy. About 50% of all pregnancies end in miscarriage. Symptoms of miscarriage includes bleeding that goes from light to heavy, several cramps, 
belly pain, weakness, white pink mucus, contraction, worsening or several back pain. Most miscarriage happen when the unborn babies has fatal genetic problems. Usually those problems are not related to the mother. Risk of miscarriage includes infection, hormonal problems, immune system responses, physical problems in the mother, uterine abnormalities, smoking, drinking alcohol, medicine condition in the mother such as diabetes. They are different kind of miscarriage but today we took a checkup on general miscarriage. If the miscarriage is complete and your uterus is empty, you probably won't need further treatment. Sometimes all the tissues does not come out. If that happens, your doctor might do a dilation procedure. Kings TV, Cynthia Nyambura. We take a short we take a short commercial break. We'll be right back with business news. Welcome back. Today in the business sector, we take a look at the textile industry where it is primarily concerned with the design, production and distribution of textile, yarn, clothes and clothing. The raw material may be natural or synthetic using the products of the chemical industry. Our business reporter, Dominic Muya, has more on this. Kiambu County is one of the fast growing and rapid developing counties in Kenya. Today, we focus on the textile industry, where it is among the major areas contributing in high imports into the country and also the largest contributing factor in revenue collection. Mitumba business has created employment for millions of Kenyans all around the country. The major market being Kekomba has created a business opportunity and gap for graduates who are unemployed to jump into the opportunity and families are able to put crates on their table and through this selling of crowds, they make a living. We take another short break, we'll be right back with Sports News. Welcome back. Welcome to Sports Focus, where we update you with the latest news updates in the world of sports. Today we will take a, we'll take a look at how Michael Olunga will lead Harambe Stars in a friendly match in Qatar. The latest transfer this summer and the EPL games to be played next weekend. Our one and only sports analyst Jun Joki has prepared this for us. To succeed, you need to find something to hold on to, something to motivate you, and something to inspire you. This is the Sports Focus. We update you with the latest news around the world of sports. We start with the local news whereby Akariobangi Sharks youngster Stanley Wilson wants to become the best midfielder for Kenya. He says his inspiration is the former captain Victoria Anyama and his ex-footballer dad Jack Omondi. The 17-year-old was handed his first ever call up to the national team Harambe Stars by head coach Igin Virat after impressing him during Kariobangi Sharks' first two matches of the season. Bernard Malala will look towards a win start when he lines up his KCB side for their first game of the Football Kenya Federation Premier League season against AFC Leopards at the Kasarani Stadium on Friday. Leopards started their season with a barren draw with FC Talanta last weekend and are itching for victory, especially after investing heavily in a new squad with several high-profile arrivals. Harambe Stars keeper Michael Olunga ready for friendly fire in a battle with familiar force in Qatar in a friendly match at the Al Jabnoa Stadium in Daho on Thursday. Olunga says playing against a side ranked higher than Kenya and with lots of experience will be crucial, especially 
especially ahead of November's World Cup qualifiers, believing this will aid them in identifying areas they need to work on. Let's now focus with the latest transfers news this summer. Everton winger Gray joins Gerard's Al Hitchfard in a 10 million euro deal. The 27 year old will play alongside former players Jordan Anderson and many other players. Ex Chelsea boss Potter turns down Leon Job. The former Chelsea and Brighton manager turns down head coach role in League One with Leon's five months after leaving Stamford Bridge. The League One club made him their first choice to try to oversee restructure in Eastern France, but he declined the offer. Here are the EPL games to be played next weekend. On the 16th of September, Wolves will play against Liverpool, Aston Villa will go head to head against Crystal Palace, Fulham will play against Luton, Manchester United against Brighton, Tottenham will play against Sheffield United, Newcastle against Brentford. On the 17th of September, Bournemouth will play against Chelsea and Everton will play against Arsenal. That's all for Sports Focus, Kings TV, June Jockey. Those were the top stories for this hour. Earlier on, you had asked a question on the imposition of carbon tax. And Bernie Swanjiko says that it is a good idea because it will protect people against climate change. We do not just secure freedom here at Kings TV. We defend what people deserve. You can reach us through our social media platforms, Facebook Kings TV, YouTube Kings Fraternity, flashed on your screen. Share your feedback and make us aware of the trending news around you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. I am Bill Sangoy.